right? Try to. And after an overview on data integrity and uh, also the quality risk management uh, discussion, uh, it's appropriate to discuss on how we do at <laughs> Okay. At FDA, the good clinical practice assessment of uh, data reliability and registration trails. And definitely, the data integrity discussion is going to elevate some of the challenges we may uh, see during the discussion. And um, during the next few minutes, I will try to touch upon and uh, provide you a top level overview of medical product approval and uh, assessment of reliability of data from. Uh, CEDAR perspective from FDA perspective and also we'll look also into the consideration in the milestones uh, for clinical inspections and uh, before the end of the talk I will also uh, touch upon on the matrix we have uh, for GCP related inspections as um, all of you know medical product approval depends on the determinate the demonstration of effectiveness and the safety through adequate and well-controlled uh, studies, uh, usually more than one study. And the reliability of those adequate and well-controlled studies, or the data that come from the uh, adequate and well-controlled studies, is very crucial in decision of uh, probability of a product. And as Gail said, I mean, uh, data uh, should be, from the data integrity perspective, complete, consistent, trustworthy and reliable, and uh, I put the fundamental elements of data integrity from uh, ICH perspective, the Alcoa, Alcoa plus principles. And FDA clinical uh, trial inspection program um, determines human subject, the adequacy of the human subject protection during the clinical trials, as well as uh, the reliability and the integrity of data in support of marketing application that come to the agency for Approval purpose. Also, we look into the regulatory compliance during the clinical study. I mean, uh, whether a company or a sponsor or an applicant, or all stakeholders for that matter, comply with the regulatory requirement by FDA. Um, how do you consider uh, uh, sites or firms for clinical inspections? Um, in general, almost all the time, uh, the inspection. Uh, plan for, in particular, marketing application begins when a company, an applicant, or a sponsor submits uh, an application to the agency. And uh, once the application, shortly after the application is received, uh, various reviewers will come together to identify sites based on different factors and uh, risks uh, that are relevant in terms of assessing data reliability and quality. And um, uh, the uh, will issue an assignment to the part of the agency, to the office, that conducts uh, the inspection for us. And the field investigators take the assignment as well as the background material that are important to verify the data uh, with the source and conduct the inspection for us. And once the inspection is completed, we review the inspection report to determine the reliability of data and the acceptability of data in support of marketing application. That information will be provided to the leading uh, uh, division or the center uh, that looks and uh, review the application uh, to help the approval decision. Therefore, uh, data reliability is critical in the approval decision of medical product application. And the usual targets, they, ha they have been discussed. And uh, we, and the Center for Drug Evaluation and Research, Primarily, uh, the, the branch uh, where I work, we focus on the clinical investigators, sponsors, CROs, monitors, and, uh, and the institutional review board inspections. Uh, how do you consider um, the GCP inspections, or how do you identify firms or sites for uh, an inspection? As it was discussed earlier, we also use risk-based assessment of uh, the, at the application level, at the study level, as well as at the site level, and in general at the application level, we take into account whether that's a new molecular entity or uh, whether it is something, an application is related to something that we have a great um, safety and efficacy profile in terms of institutional knowledge. And um, we take into account the population or the impact of the indication 
in uh, taking uh, consideration for inspection. At the study level, we look into the design of the study, whether it's an upper label study, uh, whether it's a pivotal. I mean, as you know, applications will contain multiple studies. And we cannot, because of the resource issue, and as it was discussed before, we cannot uh, inspect all the sites or all the firms involved in those all the studies. Therefore, we need to use also risk-based assessment in terms of identifying the study uh, for inspection. We also take into the site label, I and mean, multiple sites will be involved, hundreds, thousands of sites in critical studies. And uh, we look into the contribution of the site in terms of uh, generating the study data. And uh, look also at the outliers in terms of uh, efficacy and safety or the conduct of the study. Whether um, There is some anomaly uh, detected in terms of looking at the data that come from sites. Uh, we take into account the geography of the, where the studies or where the sites are located and uh, the contribution in terms of efficacy and safety outcomes. And the prior inspection of history and the financial disclosure uh, of uh, the clinical investigators, those factors help us to determine where to go to do, uh, to do GCP inspections. This is just uh, an interface to show you uh, how we look into the clinical investigator risks. I mean, we take into account the various variables or factors efficacy, safety, protocol deviations, enrollment, patient discontinuation, and so forth, um, inspectional history. And see each site, as, I mean, I don't have a pointer, but I mean, those in red or the outliers, as you see, we look at, I mean, into the details to see what may have contributed uh, that site to appear uh, outlying in a certain virus, whether it's safety or efficacy. And uh, the FDA inspection of clinical investigator sites, as everybody knows, is focused on looking and verifying the data that's provided to the agency with the source. And um, during the clinical inspection, we look into also the clinical investigator's qualification and understanding of the protocol, adherence to the study protocol, and the record keeping and um, uh, investigational product accountability practice as well as I mean, human subject protection is, has a paramount Im importance. We look into the adverse event reporting. And it, uh, also, we look into the, uh, the informed consent and the IRB approval, uh, as well as communication between the various stakeholders, in particular the one that provide oversight, the monitors and the sponsors. During the sponsor and CRO inspections, I mean, primarily we focus on the oversight function. And uh, we look into whether the sponsor or the CRO has provided the proper oversight to uh, the study and the roles and the responsibility of stakeholders. Uh, we look into the data management, handling of the study data from the start, from collection, from the design, collection, and the conduct analysis, and generation of various data sets. And we look into uh, the handling of all those uh, important uh, data points and data elements. Handling and accountability of investigation of product, as well as the adverse event reporting. And uh, we look into the uh, sponsors and the CRO's responsibility in terms of uh, the study monitoring and uh, the relevant communication between monitors and uh, the sponsors. And uh, look also, just like the clinical investigator, record keeping function and record retention. After the uh, inspections are conducted, as I mentioned earlier, at the center, we look into the inspectional report that come from the field and to determine whether those inspections, inspectional findings, impact data reliability and uh, integrity. And we also issue post-inspectional uh, correspondences to entities that um, have been inspected. And uh, the findings on data reliability and uh, integrity uh, impact us uh, significantly the way the approval decisions are made. Uh, here I have the, just the, 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 the various different points on the impact of inspection findings. Uh, what would inspection finding result? I mean, it can impact the review process of an application, whether it's an NDA or a BLA, or it can impact the approval. I mean, they are very similar. And from the review perspective, it can delay the review if the inspectional findings show significant, depending on the magnitude of the inspectional findings, uh, it can delay because we may need to do additional inspections. 
and may result or trigger even to do more broad inspection to a third party. And uh, it may also trigger uh, to request uh, the conduct of new states. And uh, impact on approval, I mean, uh, definitely uh, it can, I mean, depending on the magnitude and the degree of uh, the impact, it could delay the approval process or it may result in an approval. Uh, therefore, it is very critical to, uh, to abide with uh, GCP principles that had been discussed before and develop a quality management system. Uh, what are the GCP related inspectional findings and deficiencies? This is just a top um, a level overview of the inspections that we do. At the center for drug evaluation and research, from a GCP perspective, we conduct about 500 to 600 inspections per year. And as you see the first bar, the blue bar, the clinical investigator inspection dominates close to 86% of the inspections are clinical investigator inspections. And most of the inspections are conducted in the US, and about a third of the inspections are done outside the United States. And uh, when you look at the frequency and types of common clinical investigator GCP deficiencies, which are directly related to the data integrity, we learned that on the most common uh, deficiency, uh, persistent deficiency actually for the last four years is uh, failing to follow the protocol and um, followed by uh, inadequate and inaccurate records at sites. Drug accountability, inadequate drug accountability uh, plays also some, some, some role. When you look at, into the inspection of findings between US and US sites, the pattern is very similar. And again, uh, failure to, put, to follow the protocol and uh, inadequate and inaccurate records by clinical investigator uh, play major roles. This is just a summary. Clinical investigator, GCP related deficiency, the most common are our failure to follow the investigational plan, inadequate and inaccurate records, as well as inadequate drug accountability. Uh, sponsors and CROs, often we come across with deficiency related to the monitoring and uh, also, again, our failure to follow the investigational plan and uh, having adequate and accurate records. This is a slide just to represent the impact of uh, the inspection of findings. And we looked into, between 2015 and 2016, we had about 200 clinical inspection summary we provided to the leading review divisions. Of those 200 clinical inspection summaries, about 18% of them had significant and important recommendations uh, that encompass uh, sensitivity analysis, attitudinal inspection, and recommendations on excluding data from the site, and uh, a new study, a request for a new study, and independent and third party audits. Those are uh, recommendations that have been made for the 200, I mean, 18% of the clinical inspection report. Uh, that was generated. I think I have a problem with the microphone. Anyway, and uh, about 20%, close to 20% of the clinical inspection summaries had uh, recommendations that were significant to potentially impact the, the, the approval process. The take home message here is I mean, the GCP assessments through on site inspection play significant role in determining the approvability of the product. And as Jean said, it is very important to have a clinical development program that reliably produces high level of quality data. I mean, data that fit for purpose or the absence of error that matter and acquired in a matter that has not, uh, that doesn't jeopardize the human subject protection. Uh, thank you very much. And the next, oh, it's a break actually. Yeah, thank you very much.